welcome to my channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Megan. Today I'm going to be sharing some helpful tips um, for plane rides if you have cervical instability. I quickly found with cervical instability that honestly plane rides were just horrific. Um, so I'm here to share things, the little things that um, did help me and alleviated some pain along the way. Um, first and foremost, I'd say avoid plane rides at all costs. The only um, travel I did was for appointments. Unfortunately, my appointments were across the country, so um, the longer the plane rides and the more the car, more car rides along the way, the more layovers, the more difficult it was for me. And I'm assuming for most people with cervical instability as well. Um, what was aggravating most was the jostling um, of the of the car on the way to the um, airport, the jostling of the plane and takeoff and landing, um, the noise during the plane ride, the elevation gain, so the pressure in your head um, during the flight, the noise and simulation in the airport in in the airport. Um, so. With my cervical instability, I get extremely sensory sensitive. And so all of the movement um, alongside me was uh, very difficult as well as all of the noise. Um, so, and then with that being said, uh, a full days of a full day travel, I had the inability to isolate myself and um, get relief from stimulation. And additionally for me, with cervical instability, my most comfortable position in flares is being as flat as possible laying down. Um, that was not as easy during travel, uh, especially when sitting in a chair during a plane ride. So I would say if you have sensory sensitivity, use all precautions. Um, that was at an all time high for me. First tip, try to prep up as much as possible. Have a good night's sleep if you are able. Um, I know that a lot of that is outside of most people's control with instability. Um, for me, prepping up meant exercising in the morning the best that I was able. Um, that helped with a lot of my POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Um, so that really helps. Uh, I brought all of like my POTS type stuff. So like my compression socks, my um, uh, abdominal binder, um, just all things of that nature. I traveled, I've traveled primarily when it's been warmer, so I haven't needed like the heated socks or things like that for pots. Um, okay, next tip, if able, do not travel alone. So a saving grace for me, I would say, was the first time I had to make a huge plane ride, I had three people with me as well. Um, and one of the best parts about that was when I was on the plane, finally, I had two people on either side of me and I was able to lay on top of them. Um, they were all kind of able to tend to my needs and get me anything I needed, which uh, was necessary. Okay, so cervical instability, if traction helps you, I would say if you can have somebody who can give you traction or you have an on-the-go traction unit, definitely bring that. Um, I do best with manual traction, so um, some the person who gave it to me the best came with, was able to come with me. She would give me traction before the car ride, she'd give me traction. Um, whenever I needed it in the airport, I would just sit on the ground and she would lift up the base of my skull. Um, sometimes even on the plane, I would just shift my body sit um, with my legs crossed and she would come up um, behind me and squat in the seat next to me, lift up my head because it was that necessary. It was, I was in so much pain. Um, so to just give some context for the situation, this is what my doctor told me in preparing for a, a plane ride. She said, Megan, just use the damn wheelchair. Um, I have not wanted to use my wheelchair when I've needed it. And so I would say just 
protect yourself as much as possible. Um, use a wheelchair. I used my wheelchair from the car to um, the airport. I used it all the way up to security um, and then after the fact. And then because of that, I if you have a wheelchair, you're able to pre-board, which is really helpful. You get on first, you're able to get yourself situated. Um, and so use the wheelchair. Um, a tip along with the wheelchair, uh, if you have a layover, ask at the front before your ride um, if they can for them to leave your wheelchair for the layover and then you can recheck it um, at the, the door of the plane right before the next flight. Um, I found that in between time during layovers was the most important time for me to have a wheelchair. Um, also, if you can, bring your own wheelchair. Um, my body was just so just flared and aggravated the days of plane rides. So I needed a wheelchair on the way from the airport to the hotel, um, et cetera. And so using the airport wheelchairs, I would not have been able to take those with me after the fact. Um, uh, next thing is additionally, like I said, with bringing people, if you can have extra seats, do so. Um, know your triggers. For me, one of those in flares is being not being able to lay down all of the way. And so the next best thing I could get from being entirely flat with my body was laying on top of my friends. And so that's what I had to do. Um, I, it got so bad during some of the plane rides that I was just about to go and lay in the aisle because I was inside like screaming in my head it is just so painful um all of the jostling of the plane um it, so much so that to the point like my my family was considering um the, the potential of getting me a, a medical helicopter to fly me to my appointments um but i i know that without traction i definitely would not have been able to um do the plane rides i'd my body just would not have been able to make it. So that's, I'm just saying this to um, try to express the severity of plane rides and try to protect yourself as much as possible. So with instability, I brought my soft and my hard collar. Um, I, at this time, I was not able to wear my hard cervical collar all day long. Um, I was only supposed to wear it about four hours a day, but to not decondition the muscles in my neck, but was giving myself leeway on the um, days of air travel and, and my doctor um, agreed that I should. Um, but if I was able, I would switch from the hard collar to the soft collar. And I found that sometimes when I was in the air, the soft collar was more comfortable than the hard collar. Um, one of the reasons being because I would chew gum during um, some of the flights to alleviate the pressure in my ears and in my head, especially if you have intracranial, intracranial pressure. Um, and it was really hard on my jaw to try to chew the gum with the hard collar. So switching to the soft collar was helpful. Something I learned just on my own accord was during takeoff and landing, I would um, engage my core and tighten my abs and that helped to just stabilize me. So definitely recommend that. Takeoff and landing can be rough. Um, bring your earphones if you're sensory sensitive. I wore my big noise canceling earphones much of the time um, when the pressure of the noise canceling earphones was too much on my head. I switched to just um, AirPods, little AirPods. Sometimes I was so sensory sensitive that I had to wear the AirPods and the noise canceling headphones together. Um, know your triggers, uh, have anything that is helpful to you readily available. For me, that was having snacks and water on hand, um, especially snacks that 
were salty and helped with my um, pots and then prepare to recover in the days to follow if you can um, I would say take advantage of that um, lastly my first couple trips um, on plane my pots was flaring and so I had friends who were for several hours just squeezing my limbs um, because the blood was pulling in my limbs and that um, provided relief sometimes I was in so much pain that they would just softly like scratch my back um, so I'd say some days are worse than others it wasn't always horrific but sometimes it is and so I would just say plan accordingly and there are interventions that can be helpful along the way um, I hope that this is helpful for you